Heavenly Father, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for the great gift that mothers are today. We thank you that you have placed our mothers for a reason. You have placed the women in our lives for a reason. We pray a special blessing over the women in the house today. And we thank you for the men in this house that know the importance of honoring those women and those mothers in our lives. Jesus, now we turn our hearts and our attention to you, focused on what you have for us this morning. We know that without you, we are prone to stumble and fall, but with you, we get to live life in abundance. So Jesus, as we lay our hurts and our burdens at your feet, as we lay our distractions at your feet, as we, as we come to you with the, the situations in our lives that we can't see an answer out of, and we lay it at your feet, we know that you are ready and willing to move in power as we let you. So as we worship you today, we want an encounter with you today. We love you and we praise you. Amen. Near to the broken hearted, keeper of every promise, love that's forever constant, you are, you are, you are.
say amen. Amen. If you free, you say amen. Amen. Again and again and again. Oh, come on. If you save, you say amen. Amen. If you heal, you say amen. Amen. If you free, you say amen. Amen. Again and again and again. If you save, you say. No. 
We know you are never going to let us down, even though we're going through difficult times and difficult trials and difficult stipulations going on in our life, Father God. We know that you are never going to let us down. You are the God that is always there for us, always providing for us, always protecting us. You are always there for us no matter what. Father God, we give you praise this morning. We thank you for each of the moms that are here this morning on this wonderful Mother's Day that we can uh, come around them and just celebrate them, Father, for all they've done, whether they're a new mom or biological, adoptive, foster, whatever the case, maybe a spiritual mom, Father God. We give you praise for each of these women today, Father. We pray abundance of blessings over them today, Father, that you would just continue to pour out your blessings, pour out your riches upon their life and that they would feel blessed and cherished today. And we give you this day, and we give you the praise today, and we thank you that we can come together and worship you for all that you are and all that you've done for us, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So this morning, we want to bring up our, our prayer slide up here. Jeff and Leah and Chris Boland and Jennifer and the Vetteral family. These are all people that we're constantly praying for throughout the week. Philomena Conrad and Seal and Sophie and family. Buck and Jim Kashuba. He's dealing with some uh, abdominal issues. And Brandon. Susan Teal is having some issues with her back, so we're praying for her right now. Mike, Cheryl, Melissa and Andrew, Deborah Husty, and Israel. Father God, we give you praise for each of these people. Whether they're watching online or maybe they were able to come in person today, Father, but that they would feel your healing today. Your healing touch, whether they're going through a financial situation, a uh, physical issue with their bodies, Father God, we are lifting them up right now, Father, that you would uh, take control of the situation, that they would feel your presence right now, wherever they might be, if they're at home, if they're in a hospital room right now, that they would know that they have a congregation of people rallying around them, that they have people praying for them throughout the week, that they have people that are concerned about them, that know that we serve a God who can do the unimaginable, the unthinkable. We serve a God who can heal. We serve a God that is willing and capable to heal all of our needs. And Jesus, we give you this day and we thank you for this. We thank you for these people and we, uh, we just place them into your hands today. In Jesus' name, everyone said... 
Amen. Amen. God is good. Ooh. Powerful worship. So at this time, you can even take a seat. I'm going to invite our ushers forward. And we're going to take up tithe and offering. And you know, the, it's really neat because we can really give back to God. You know, as a child growing up, it was always like, no, that's mine, that's mine, that's mine, and that's my money, and, you know, kids get birthday money. But now as you get older, you see, we can really give all back to God because he gave everything for us. Even your finances, God gave everything for us. So today we have four easy ways you can give. You can do cash in the, the bucket or a check. You can also go online and do that, or you can even text. We make it, <laughs> we make it that easy for you. You could text the amount to 84321. So you're able to do that as well. But we just want to thank God this morning for all that he's given to us and that we have this opportunity to give back to him. So Jesus, we give you praise today for everything that you've given to us, financial blessings, maybe it's a physical blessing, maybe it's a healing, whatever it might be, that we can just take this time to give back to you. And we just pray that each of, uh, all of this money would go to further your kingdom, Father God. All of this money would go to further your purpose, the mission you have laid out for us, the vision you've laid out upon the pastors and the staff, that it would just go to further your kingdom to bring more people from the community to get to know you, Father God. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So if you are a first-time guest, we want to welcome you, and happy Mother's Day to everybody. Very exciting. Uh, if you are a first-time guest, though, we want to welcome you. You can scan the QR code on the screen there, and we do have a gift for you at the Hub as well. A uh, nice little uh, gift for you just for showing up. Just Isn't that cool? We just we want to bless you. That's all that that is. So if you can uh, scan the QR code there, it'll come straight to my email address, and we'll connect with you this week. Or you can fill out a connections card in the seat back pocket in front of you. And you can turn that into the hub, and they'll give you a, a wonderful little gift from us just to say thanks for coming. You know, we want to just bless you, and, and we want to thank you. Also, we have a couple things coming up at Harvest. The left QR code, you can scan that code, and it'll give you all of the, the weekly newsletter that we put together for every week. You can see what's going on, what's coming up in the next month or two, and stay connected. The one on the right, if you are not receiving weekly text alerts from us, that's a great way for you to start receiving those. And we, uh, we want to make that available to you so you can be in the loop and see what's going on. We do have a couple of uh, bullet points here, as we like to call them, coming up. We have our foster care awareness event that will be held this coming Saturday over at The Rock. Our mother-daughter tea will be held on uh, May 24th. They are doing a sight and sound bus trip in August. And also, Father's Day is coming up next month already. <laughs> we got one woo over there. <laughs> I wonder who it was. <laughs> uh, so, yes, we have, a, we have also a special one-hour service for that as well, for Father's Day, as well as some cool giveaways. So you're going to want to be here if you're a dad. Uh, I'm, I'm a little jealous. So it's pretty cool. They get some cool gifts. I mean, today's pretty cool, too, the spa day for the ladies. So. But that's another opportunity. Uh, so invite your dads to that service. That'll be awesome. And last but not least, we are doing our Pathways baby bottles again. So you'll see out in the foyer, the concourse area, you can pick up a, ba a baby bottle on your way out today. Would be wonderful. Fill it with change. Fill it with dollar bills. A check. People have done that before. Uh, one per family, uh, preferably. And then you return it to the hub by Father's Day. And we go and give all that to Pathways. And Christina uh, Masker does a wonderful job with that, connecting us with that. So please take a bottle with you. I know my kids love to like fill it up as much change as they can get out of mommy's purse. So <laughs> you guys can do that. That'll be a, a great opportunity. So at this time, I'm going to invite Pastor Ray forward. And we're actually going to draw our, our name for our giveaway. So ladies, get your tickets out. <laughs> All right, ladies. Are you ready? So we have a J. Madison Day Spa experience. Uh, on the way in, we want to make sure all the mothers, all the mothers did get a ticket and put it in here, correct? We didn't miss nobody? Going once, going twice. You didn't get a ticket? Who did not get a ticket? They didn't get a ticket. All right. Well, we're going to run out there real quick. Well, they, we need two tickets. Did I see two? T three tickets. Three tickets. Four tickets. All right, bring the whole roll out. <laughs> 
we're going to bring the whole world out. If you did not get a ticket, I want you to raise your hand until one of our attendants come. Stephen, you don't count. All right. While, while, while you have your hands raised and they're coming around with the tickets, I want to say this. Oh, we got one over here. I want to say this. Mother's Day can be a love-hate relationship. Why is that? Because Mother's Day can bring forth great pain. Maybe you have lost a child in your past. Maybe there's some, maybe you had a bad mother experience growing up. There's, there's a lot of issues that come up that conjure up emotions that are not positive. And we recognize that here today. I recognize that. And I, I want to let you know today, I, I'm believing that God wants to restore and rejuvenate and refresh your spirit today. I believe that you're here today. Your, your being here today is a divine appointment for what God wants to do in your spirit and in your life. Can we agree together on that, church? Amen. I believe that God wants to refresh that, renew that. And those things of the past can truly just be that the things of the past, that God would impart to you a fresh and a new perspective for your future. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Well, I'm glad I asked. One of you that just raised your hand, you're probably thinking, I'm glad you asked. Amen. All right. All right, so I'm not looking. Here we go. We're going to see what happens. We got, I see these ladies running towards me. All right. That's it, right? All right. I feel like we should have like, like Jeopardy music going on or something. The anticipation. All right, here it is. The winning ticket. Winning number. Winning number. Do I have to read the whole number? Yeah. I need bifocals. This is ridiculous. Two. I hope I get the numbers right. I would hate to have to change that. Can you imagine if I had to change it? I'd say, I'm sorry, you're a loser. You have, I have to. <laughs> two. I, 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 there's only two two so far. So two two. Four eight. Six two. Five. All right, come on, give it up. Yeah. Oh, this is awesome. Come on. Yes. Come here, I'm going to help you up. I'm going to help you up. Come on. How you doing, sweetie? I like your bows in your hair. Did your mommy do that or did you do it all yourself? You did it? She did it. <laughs> oh, I'll give you twenty dollars later. That was a great job. Perfect timing. Right on, right on, Mark. Well, can I tell you something? Tell it. Oh, I don't even have a mic. Can you grab me that mic there? Here, tell it. Tell us your name and your child, your baby's name. I'm Marcy. Marcy, Charlotte. say hi, Marcy. <laughs> and what's your name? Hey. Okay. Charlotte. <laughs> So, Marcy, I just want to, I can honestly, I can think of, many of you deserve, but can I tell you, I, knowing a little bit of your story, this past year has been very, very difficult. And I can really think of uh, no better person to receive this today than you. And uh, we appreciate you, Mom. You're a blessing. We appreciate all of our moms. Thank you. Appreciate all of our moms. You know, just as she's won this, uh, the gift that you received today uh, is a special gift that we wanted to give all of our moms. So hopefully you received that. For those of you that, that raised your hand as you came in here, I'm assuming you missed it all. Um, so we have a special bag for you out in the concourse and uh, also the photo booth. And then following this service, uh, we will have a special brunch for you that we want to bless you with. And so this is the opportunity to there at the photo booth, you can take some time with your son and your daughter or your grandchildren and 
and have a beautiful photo. But uh, I want to I wanna pray for Marcy. Can we do that? Just bless her today. Father, we're just so thankful. Lord, I thank you that, that, Lord, that you have brought her through a very difficult year. And Father, I know that you have stretched her. I know, God, that her faith has grown, that you have expanded her reach, her, her influence, and her, her spiritual aptitude for what you have in store for her future. Lord, we just bless her. We bless this family. And God, we just pray that this day spa experience would also be a much needed and incredible blessing for her in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Can you say amen? Can you say amen? <laughs> All right, let me help you down. Let me help you down. Go on, give my great big hand one more time with you. All right, all right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'll tell you what, this house has so many incredible moms. There's a special mom that we want to share with you. She has been a mom, a mother in multiple ways, multiple fashions. Very unique individual. We want to share this video with you. So watch this clip with me now. Hi, my name is Susan Roskis, and I'm a mom. I'm a biological mom, I'm an adoptive mom, and I'm a foster mom. I have eight children. Um, four of them came to me through birth, and four of them came through me to me through adoption. But they are all my kids. The way that we started fostering, I think, had two prongs. One was we took in a baby that was uh, belonged to a gal at our church who had disappeared for the weekend. And, um, and at the same time, I was doing some work with the pro-life group in the area, and I had counseled some women, and none of those women changed their minds about having an abortion. And so I was disappointed and feeling like maybe that wasn't the route we sh I should go. And so we talked about, since I'm saying to women, you need to have your baby, that I should say, I will take care of babies that I can take care of because that's just what I should do if I'm gonna tell you what to do. Being an adoptive family came kind of uh, as a surprise because we were somewhat older even when we started foster care. And the, one of the first babies we had, um, I said to my husband, this, the social worker said that she thought she'd be with us for a long time. So I said, what do you think we will do? And he said, well, we'd adopt her if she stayed. Actually, it's a long story. I'll try to make it short. She stayed for six months. They moved her to be with her sister uh, with a family in Philadelphia. And I prayed and I kept praying, God, if it's your will, I pray that you will come back. And uh, two and a half years later, my son started dating a gal that worked for the agency that had her in Philly. and. He told her that we had had that baby and could she find out how she was doing? And within two weeks, her boss came into her office and said, her name is Susan also, and she's now my daughter-in-law, and said, Susan, do you know anyone who would like these two girls? And uh, it was an astounding God thing, astounding. And within a year and a half, they were adopted and became our daughters forever. Today, we're talking about beauty from ashes. And I think that adoption in many ways brings beauty from what might have been ashes. And while our children that we adopt do lose their original family, generally the circumstances of that family were not positive. There are often drugs involved, prostitution, um, all kinds of uh, negative things. And um, one of the things that I used to think about a lot when one of my daughters who played the piano beautifully was having a recital, it would bring tears to my eyes to think about how different her life was with us than it might have been. I'd like to say, while I have your attention, that fostering and adopting is uh, wonderfully um, satisfying. It's been wonderful having each and every baby and child that has come through our family. 
And I want to say one thing that I'm so thankful for with my uh, biological children is that they treat all of the adopted kids, they're their sisters and brothers, and no different. And I see it all the time, and I'm so grateful for that. But if you've ever thought that maybe you would want to take a child into your home, believe me, they need people to do that. And I don't think you'd ever be sorry. And I'm telling you now, you don't have to be perfect. You just have to be available. Motherhood is all I ever wanted. I wanted to be a wife and a mother my whole life. I don't know what I would do without my kids. I, I have no idea um, what my life would be like. And I know it would not be as full or as blessed. And now with grandchildren and actually a great grandchild coming, uh, in June, I'm just blessed beyond belief, blessed beyond belief. If you are a new mom or a young mom, first thing I would say is don't beat yourself up. Don't feel badly after things don't go the way you thought they would. Just remember that God is there and he will make you enough of the mother you need to be. And he knows we're not perfect. That's why we need him. So to all you mothers out there, I wish you a very happy Mother's Day and the blessings of God on your life. Praise God. Well said. Well said. The other day I was traveling, I realized that my truck needed uh, inspection. And I was traveling to a little town called Factoryville. And as I was traveling, I recognized that there was a billow of smoke rising up from what I perceived to be my final location of where I was going to be going for my inspection. And I thought to myself, selfishly, well, it doesn't look like I'm going to be getting my truck inspected today. But as I traveled further and I came to the place where that huge billow of smoke was rising, I realized it wasn't the garage that I was going to, but it was rather two houses down, a house that was built in the 1800s that went up within 30 minutes and totally lost its roof and caved in upon itself. It was owned by an older man and he had two sons of which they were firemen. And apparently the wife had died not too long ago and uh, there was a grease fire on the stove and being that it was an older man and probably two sons, I'm, I'm assuming being that the mother wasn't there, the stove was not cleaned and the grease fire sort of spread rapidly and it demolished the house. The heat from it was intense and, and, and powerful. The day after, I happened to drive by there again and I, I looked at the devastation and literally it was just a pile of ash. Pile of ash. You may, this morning, I'm speaking to mothers, but I'm also speaking to fathers, speaking to everybody, but I want to talk to moms today. You may look at your life presently right now in this moment and say, I feel as though I'm sitting in a pile of ash. I feel as though I am sitting in a pile that I did not ask for, that I did not look for, I did not sign up for, and I wasn't believing for. But yet, it seems as though within 30 minutes or in 30 seconds, my life has turned to a pile of ash. Whether there was issues from your mother or your father in growing up, whether there was abuse in a relationship, whether there uh, was some things that you decided to do but realized later in life you wish you didn't do, a lot of regrets, a lot of disappointments, a lot of heartache that piles up in one's life and you think and you look back and you ponder where you are right now and you say, I am sitting in a pile of ash. Our theme today is taken from a powerful text. Isaiah 61. There's one line that jumped out to me and I feel the Spirit of God wants to speak a word to you today. That God, He will crown you with beauty and replace it in replacement of the ashes that you feel as though you're sitting in. 
The question that you and I have to ask is, how do I get from this pile of rubble, this pile of ash, the regret, the heartache, the the sin, the shame, the, the suffering, the sacrifices that you have made, how do I get from that point to a place of victory and promise? How do I get from the point of being in ash to being crowned with a crown of beauty? How do I get to that place? I'd love to know. I want to take you down a path that I believe is going to bring forth a revelation so that you can begin to operate in a different realm of thinking, a different realm in your spirit, a different realm for the future that God has for you this morning. I'll take you to Isaiah 61. I'm going to pick up with verse 1. Because it's interesting in this text, in the text that we're going to deal with and the promises and the riches that we're going to unpack this morning, this text, Isaiah 61, verses 1 and 2, were actually repeated by Jesus in Luke chapter 4, verse 18, in the synagogue when he was revealing himself to his, his hometown, and he began to speak these words. And then after they, he spoke those words, he was taken to a cliff to be thrown over and killed we obviously know that did not happen but the context of Isaiah 61 is very powerful and I believe it very relatable for you and I the context of Isaiah is this the prophet Isaiah is wanting to give hope to a remnant of individuals that are moaning because they have been in exile for generations and their city have been demolished and it lays in ashes they were in bondage by the Babylonians they were in exile and they're moaning they're crying out saying what are we going to do how are we ever going to see this this city restored the, 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 the richness of our heritage how are we ever going to see this come back There's some that are here today and you feel you've spoke it, you've thought it, and you've said, I've been given a bad hand in life. I've been dealt a bad set of cards in my life. You might say, my life comes out of ashes. My mother and father, they were nothing but or anything other than a mother or father or or, or the the circumstances that, that you were open to or exposed to have left you in a place of just devastation you're not alone it says it has happened and has revealed itself for generations you can blame your mother your father you can blame your your family you can blame your boss you can blame your spouse you can blame a lot of individuals but one thing I know and that is this you have the opportunity to change it. The remnant that was found in Israel that Isaiah was anointed to speak to had the power to change it. The opportunity to change it. Isaiah begins to speak in Isaiah 61 verse 1. He says, the spirit of the sovereign Lord. And I want you to picture Jesus as well in Luke 4, 18. He's declaring this and revealing himself. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me for the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to comfort the brokenhearted and to proclaim that captives will be released and prisoners will be freed. Hallelujah. He has sent me to call those who mourn, that remnant, that the time of the Lord's favor has come. And that's where Jesus stopped. He rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant. But today we're going to continue in this path. And with it, the day of God's anger against their enemies. To all who mourn in Israel, He will give a crown of beauty for ashes. I want you to see the promises that he is releasing 
as we're speaking this. I'm releasing these promises over your lives as I'm reading this to you. A joyous blessing instead of mourning. A festive praise instead of despair. In their righteousness, they will be like great oaks that the Lord has planted for his glory. The end result when we choose to hear the prophetic word of the Lord, the end result is that you become, I become, a oak of righteousness, a planting of the Lord. That planting, come on, give God praise for that. You become an oak of righteousness. But it's interesting to me that where that oak of righteousness comes from, that oak of righteousness is planted in the ash. Out of the ashes, out of the devastation, out of the heartache, out of the suffering comes this oak of righteousness, a planting of the Lord. It's not by my hand, not by my own will, but it's by the hand of God that he says, I'm going to take your ashes and I'm going to put my righteousness in you. I'm going to put my grace upon you. I'm going to put my mercy upon you. I'm going to put my love inside of you. And that ash and that rubble that you have been dealing with and striving and exercising and bemoaning, I'm going to make a oak of righteousness come bursting forth out of the rubble of your life. Come on, that's a promise for every one of you in this house. Man, woman, child, student, son, daughter, that's a promise that God gives to you and to me. Oaks of righteousness. Beauty for ashes. In James chapter 1, my, 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 my mind went very quickly to James chapter 1 because this is, we fast forward into the New Testament and we, we see in James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4, the writer implores us and he reveals something that the sacrifice, that the heartache, that the toil is producing. He says, dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way. Let me ask you, anybody have had troubles? A lot of you are liars and you need to repent. <laughs> Consider, and this is mind-boggling to me, how, how do you wrap your brain around? Consider it great joy. I don't know about you, but I, I'm not very joyous when I'm suffering. I like to choke something. I want to kick something. I want to get angry. I want to... There's times when my flesh rises up quicker than the, the Holy Spirit. But the author says, count it great joy. Consider the opportunity. Consider an opportunity for great joy. I want you to focus on that word opportunity. Say opportunity. Opportunity. Listen. For you know that when your faith, say faith, faith, opportunity in faith, when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. Say nothing. Needing nothing. This verse is very powerful. There is a testimony of a story that Catherine Coleman, if you're not familiar with Catherine Coleman, she was a great healing evangelist uh, in her day in the 60s, 70s, in that time frame. And God gave her a vision. And in that vision, she shared it to a congregation of a dream that she had. In that dream that she had, she said this. She saw three people. There was, they were three individuals. And one, Jesus came to and hugged and embraced. There was another that he did not embrace, but he laid his hand upon that person's head. The third one, he looked and he continued to walk by. 
She went to the Lord, and, and when she woke up and said, Lord, please tell me, what is that vision? What is the, the understanding? How do, I, how do I understand what this vision is speaking and saying to me? And the Holy Spirit began to reveal to her and said this to her. She said, the first one was discouraged, and I needed, I needed to give an embrace and let her know that I'm with you. The, the second wasn't discouraged, but needed but needed a assurance. And so all he did was lay his hand on the individual's head. And the third one, as he looked and read what was going on in that one's life, said, this one's strong. I can move on. I believe that within the body of Christ, there needs to be a strengthening and a maturing there needs to be a, a deepening. There needs to be an understanding of his word. We need to have an understanding of, of, of what the Holy Spirit is wanting to do in and through our lives. There, there needs to be a deepening of our spirit because when the trials of life do come, how quick are we to abandon our faith and say, God, why have you done this? God, you've done this to me. God, why have you allowed this to happen? We begin to blame God. God, instead of saying, I need to endure because God is my only hope. He is my only answer. He's the one that formed me in my mother's womb. From Ecclesiastes 3.20, from dust I came and to dust I will go. I can only go. My only hope is Him. God is challenging our mothers today. He's challenging women today. He's challenging fathers today. He's challenging young men today. That your first thing should not be at the throw in the towel of your faith. But can I tell you, your strength comes from the struggle. When I struggle in my faith, I am working out my salvation. I am working in what God is wanting to do inside of me. Woo. Saints of God, I want to tell you today, the church needs to come to a place where we learn to endure. We learn to press through the pain. You say, you say, you people don't know the ashes that I come from. People don't know. People don't know the sacrifice and the struggle. All people might see is all the glitter and the glamour, but they don't know the story. You will be perfect and complete. I tell you something when you learn to be a little scrappy I pray a scrappy anointing falls on you come on what do you got next that looked weird I believe the saints of God need to realize that there is a spiritual battle for your life. We are fighting a spiritual battle. You can't medicate this. You can't drink enough alcohol. You can't take enough drugs. You can't have enough sex. You can't have enough whatever to try to fill that gap, that void that God is trying to fill in your life. The only way is that you get up out of the ashes. Job lost everything. He lost everything. And the Bible says that he sat with sackcloth and ashes. And he sat there. I'm calling forth men and women today to rise. Rise. Get up out of the ashes. You don't belong to stay there. 
There is a season to sit in your ass. There is a season to sit on the ass so that you can learn endurance, that you can learn to be scrappy, that you can learn spiritual warfare, that you can learn the deep truths that God is trying to reveal in your spirit. But I'm calling some moms today. I'm calling some dads today to get up out of the ash of your life. Stop blaming people. Stop blaming God. Stop blaming your circumstances. Stop blaming and bemoaning the circumstances that have happened in your life. Because God, I declare to you, God is before you. And if he is before you, who can be against you? Nobody. Nobody can be against you. Raise your hand and say, that's me. That's me. I claim it. Come on, say it. I claim it. I claim it. I claim it. I claim it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God has a word for you, a promise. Listen, what he forms is built from the foundation of ash. He forms you, the Bible says. He forms you in your mother's womb. What he forms is built from the foundation of the ashes that you came from. God is changing your perspective. All of a sudden, you're going to be thankful for the problems that you had. Thank you, Lord. That's where I learned. Can I tell you something? I didn't learn the hardest things on the mountaintop. I learned. I learned the devastating blows when I was in the valley and I was struggling to get up out of my ash but what he forms is built from the foundation of the ash the ash may be from my parents the ash from my past the struggles, the failures, the sacrifices but the greatness that he wants you to become is based out of the ash this, Hebrews 5, Hebrews 5, 8, 9, even though Jesus was God's son, this text jumped out at me, even though Jesus was God's son, he learned obedience, he learned obedience, do you hear what I'm saying, Jesus the Son of God, He learned obedience. We grow and we mature and we begin to get up out of our ash when we begin to learn to be obedient to what the Holy Spirit is calling us and wooing us to move into and to walk into. If you are going to rise up out of the ash of your past, out of the ash of the sacrifices and the struggle, can I tell you, it all starts right there. If it was good enough for Jesus, it's going to be good enough for you and I. If Jesus learned the obedience, he became obedient even unto death death on a cross when you and I begin to learn obedience can I tell you there's a greater level of anointing that falls upon you he learned obedience from the things he suffered in this way God qualified him as a perfect high priest and he became the source He became the source of eternal salvation for all those who obey Him. Those who obey Him. When we begin to walk in the obedience of His Word, when we begin to walk in the obedience of the Holy Spirit when He speaks to us, when we begin to walk in that obedience, we begin to rise up out of that ash. We begin to walk in the strength and the power and the anointing. Why? Because we're not complaining and we're not 
we're not beginning, we're not going back to the past change. We're not going back to the issues from where we came from. But my obedience has been moving forward to the plan and the purposes of God that he has for you. Say, I want to get out of the ash. Come on, say it. I want to get out of the ash. I want us to stand to your feet. We're going to close with a song. <clears throat> Graves into gardens. And I'm speaking it over to you today that God is turning your ash He's turning the ashes of your experience, the struggles of that past, that grave, and he's turning it into a beautiful garden. He's anointing you and he's crowning you with a crown of beauty today. But I want you to understand something. What he forms, he fills. I want you to track with me and get this final promise. I want you to track with me. What he forms, he indwells. What he fashions, he inspires. What he puts together, he fills up. The earth was formless and void until the Holy Ghost began to overcome it. And he filled the earth. Can I tell you, God sent a man and he said, I need you to build an ark. But what's going to happen with this ark? I'll provide the wood, God says, but I need you to build it. And what did he do? He filled the ark in order to bring salvation. What happens? David had too much blood on his hands in order for him to build that great temple. He, God said, listen, it's not going to be you that build it. However, I'm going to provide the wood. I'm going to provide the resources. I'm going to provide everything that you need so that your son Solomon can build the temple. Can I tell you, out of the ashes of David's faults and failures and disappointments, his son Solomon built a magnificent, a beautiful, ornate temple. And when God allowed Solomon to build that temple, what happened? He filled it with the Shekinah glory of God. What he forms and fashions and builds, he fills. And I want to tell you today, God wants to fill you with strength. He wants to fill you with power and authority. But it begins under and walking in the obedience of what he has. Come on and give him praise right now. Come on, let's sing it together. Come on, let's sing it together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You turn morning to dancing. Come on, yes. Lift those hands to the Lord. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into yes. glory.
is in this place, listen, if you believe that the Holy Spirit is speaking to your spirit, I want you to lift your hands to the Lord. I want you to lift it high, and we're going to pray. We're going to pray that the Holy Spirit, that which he formed out of the ashes of your life, he's going to fill, and you're going to be obedient. You're going to walk in obedience. You're going to walk in the obedience of what the Holy Spirit says in his word when he speaks to you, when he talks to you. If, he, if he's speaking to you today, just lift your hands to the Lord, and we're going to pray this prayer right now. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I receive your word. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have formed me, that you have fashioned me in my mother's womb, that today you crown me with beauty and you plant me as an oak of righteousness from the ashes of my life. I stand on that promise. I move forward today on the promises that I stand on that you have given to me. Anoint me today. Fill my heart. Fill my mind with your word, your direction, and your promises. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Mothers, we pray that you have a blessed and wonderful day. Fathers, bless them today. Children, bless your moms. I would encourage you to join us out in the lobby in the concourse area as we just uh, have a time uh, of refreshment and just uh, spending time with all of our beautiful moms today. God bless you, saints. We love you, and we'll see you next week. Hold on, hold on, don't swipe away from our stream just yet. Those funny cat videos and pictures of what your friends had for lunch will still be there. But I want to ask you to stay with me for just a few more moments. My name is Ray Petz. I'm the lead pastor here at Harvest Church in Northeastern Pennsylvania. And I am so glad that you chose to spend some time with us today online. Now, maybe you regularly attend Harvest, but illness, travel, or scheduling conflicts kept you away today. Maybe you live halfway around the world from us and have discovered our online stream. Or maybe someone shared a link to this video with you because they thought this message might be relevant to your situation. Or perhaps you are looking for a home church and are checking us out. And you might even be someone looking for some answers to questions like, is God real and who is this Jesus? No matter what your reason for watching, I trust that something in the word that was shared today has touched you personally and has deepened your understanding of who Jesus is. For those of you that are in an EPA area that are checking us out or who are seeking answers to some of life's bigger questions, it's great that you can join us online, but trust me when I say that there is no better way to learn what we are all about or experience the sense of belonging and family that God has uh, for you than to actually come and to celebrate with us in person. The Bible tells us don't neglect the meeting together uh, to, so that you can encourage one another. So feel free to explore our website and social media pages, but please come and join us at 340 Carverton Road in Trucksville at, at 9 and 11 a.m. on Sunday. For those of you that cannot physically join us because you are separate, separated by circumstances or distance, we still want you to feel like a part of Harvest Family too. Please keep watching us online and message us with your prayer needs and questions or stories of victory that you may have. And lastly, if you can think of two or three people that might benefit from hearing today's message, please share this video with them or tag them by name in the comment section if you're watching on social media. Once again, thank you for watching today and we look forward to sharing your journey with you. God bless.